Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be talking about the AKS primality test. Now, this is a test for primes, and this pr uh, test never fails. So if you give me a natural number n, I can put it through this test and tell you with 100% accuracy whether or not n is prime. Now, you may have heard of some other primality tests before, so for example, the Fermat uh, primality test, but this doesn't always work because sometimes numbers which aren't prime, when you put them through this test, claim to be prime. So it's not 100% accurate, that test, but this one is. So let me state what, uh, what the test is and then prove why it's 100% accurate. Okay, so if we, suppose you give me a natural number n which is bigger than or equal to 2, then n is a prime if and only if n divides each of the coefficients of this polynomial here. So this polynomial is x plus 1 all raised to the n minus x to the n plus 1. Okay, so of course this is a polynomial in x and we claim that n is prime if and only if it divides each of the coefficients of uh, each of the terms in this polynomial. Okay, let's jump into why that's the case. Okay, so before we get stuck into things, let's sort of simplify this polynomial here using the binomial theorem. So we can write this thing here in terms of each of the sort of uh, powers of x up to n by using the binomial theorem. So this is just the sum from r equals naught to n of n choose r times x to the r, and then technically times 1 to the n minus r, but of course 1 to the power of anything is 1. Okay, so this thing here is a sum from r equals 0 to n of n choose r times x to the r minus this thing here, so minus x to the n plus 1. But this is sort of essentially taking off the first and last term of this thing here, because when r equals 0, we get n choose 0, which is 1, times x to the 0, which is 1, so we get this sort of, uh, when r is 0, we get a 1 coming out of this summation here. But that cancels with that 1 there, because you've got 1 minus 1. And then when we look at the nth term, so when r equals n, we get n choose n, which is 1 times x to the n. So that makes an x to the n from this uh, summation here, but that cancels with that x to the n here. So essentially, subtracting x to the n and subtracting 1, it takes off the first and last terms of this summation. So this is just the sum from r equals 1 now to n minus 1 of n choose r times x to the r. Okay, so this polynomial we can write like this thing here. And I remember the AKS test says that n is prime if and only if n divides each of the coefficients. So n is prime if and only if n divides each of the coefficients. So n divides, and the coefficients are just n choose r, and that's for r equals 1 to all the way up to n minus 1. Okay, of course this is sort of an equivalent stating of the AKS primality test, so this is what I'm going to be working with. Now let's prove that this is true. Okay, so let's firstly prove this direction, so if n is prime, then n divides each of these coefficients, so n divides n choose r for r equals 1 to all the way up to n minus 1. Okay, so let's, since n is prime, let's just denote n with p, that's quite standard, so p is a prime number, and we want to show that p divides p choose r. Okay, well what's p choose r? Remember that's just p factorial all over r factorial times p minus r factorial. But of course then we can write the top as p times p minus 1 times dot 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 all the way up to p minus r plus 1 times p minus r factorial. Okay, um, pretty standard. And then, of course, it's going to cancel with the p minus r factorial on the bottom. Okay, so the p minus r factorial there, and there they cancel. And we're just left with p times p minus 1 times dot dot dot, all the way up to uh, p minus r plus 1, divided by r factorial. Now, remember, this is still going to be an integer, because it's something to something else. So it's going to be a nice integer. But notice that the top clearly divides p, because it's got p times an integer. But the bottom never divides p. And the reason for that is because, remember, we're looking at r factorial, and r is between 1 and n minus 1, or p minus 1, sorry. But because p is prime, in particular, that means that any value of r in this range here will never divide p. So that means that r, r minus 1, <coughs> r, r minus 1, r minus 2, all the way up to 1, none of those numbers divide p. Uh, sorry, none of those numbers, yeah, none of those numbers divide p, and thus this denominator will never divide p, so there's nothing to cancel this p on the top, so that means that this thing here will always be divisible by p. So I can always write it as p times some number, let's say lambda, where lambda is an integer. Or in particular, yeah, no, it would be an actual number. 
Okay, so let me just go over that again. I can t I've got a p on top, so the numerator is certainly divisible by p, but because p is prime, r factorial will never divide p, and that means there's nothing to sort of cancel this p on top. But remember, because of course this will be an integer, this r factorial will cancel with sort of some of the terms in this product here, but the p on top will stay there, so the resulting thing will be p times some integer lambda, um, but in particular, this thing here will divide p. So p choose r uh, uh, has a factor of p, so p divides p choose r, and that's this direction shown. Now let's show the other direction, and we'll do that by the contrapositive, so if n isn't prime, then we can find some r in this range here, such that n does not divide n choose r. Okay, so now we're going to prove the reverse direction by the contrapositive, so we're going to assume that n is composite, so n isn't prime, but then that means that it has some prime factor p, uh, so we can write n equals p times d, where because obviously if p divides n, then n equals p times something else, and we're just calling that something else d, and in particular, because n isn't prime, both p and d lie in this range here. Now, I claim that n does not divide n choose p, and then of course that will prove this direction here uh, by the contrapositive, um, and to see that, it's kind of similar to the same reason as before when n was prime, that n always divided n choose r. Okay, but let's look at n choose p and see, and see sorry, that n does not divide n choose p. Okay, so what's n choose p? Well, for the same reason as before, n choose p is just n times n minus 1 times all the way up to n minus p plus 1, and then we're dividing that by p factorial. Okay, now I claim that n does not divide this thing here. Well, why is that the case? Well, suppose for contradiction n did divide this thing here, then I can write it as lambda times n, where lambda is an integer. So then it would equal lambda times n, where lambda is a natural number. Okay, but then just dividing both sides by n, I see that lambda is equal to n minus 1 times n minus 2 times dot dot dot, all the way up to n minus p plus 1 divided by p factorial. But now what we're going to do is look at uh, uh, the top mod p. Uh, sorry, so I want to show that to reach my contradiction that lambda is not an integer. Well, for lambda to not be an, sorry, for lambda to be an integer, it must be that this numerator here divides p factorial. But in particular, it must divide p. But I claim that the numerator does not divide p. Okay, so I claim that this thing here, n minus one, n minus two, all the way up to n minus p plus one. I claim that that does not divide p, and that's obviously difficult to see. Uh, let's just look at it mod p and show that it's non-zero. This thing here is congruent to, well, firstly, remember that n is equal to p times d, so n is divisible by p, so certainly n minus p is divisible by p, so that means that n minus p plus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. Okay, then the next factor here is just one more than that number, so 2, and then so on, all the way up to this number here, which is p minus 1, uh, is this number here, sorry, plus p minus 1. So, So this thing here, this product, is congruent to 1 times 2 times dot dot dot, all the way up to p minus 1, which of course is just p minus 1 factorial. But Wilson's theorem tells us that this thing here is congruent to minus 1 mod p, but in particular, it's not 0 mod p. So then that means that this numerator here is not divisible by p, so certainly not divisible by p factorial, so this thing here will never cancel to an integer. So lambda won't be an integer, even if we wanted it to be. OK, and that proves that n does not divide n choose p, and thus that proves that the AKS primality test is 100% accurate. If you give me a value n, which is bigger than or equal to 2, it's going to tell me if n is prime or if n is not prime. Now, in terms of actual efficiency, uh, to work out these binomial coefficients for large n, it's computationally quite difficult, so there are a few simplifications to the algorithm, but it essentially all boils down to this maths here, uh, which hopefully isn't too difficult to follow. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you are new here, please do consider subscribing and checking out some of my other fun maths videos as well. That's all for today. I will catch you in the next one. Have a great day.